ദണ്ഠായുധം ദവിക്ക ദേവ ദണ്ഠായുധം ദവിക്ക ദേവ 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 തനിത്തിരുവ രുമേ തവ മണ്ണികേ ദണ്ഠവ That's a lovely little bird. Look how it is becoming completely dark there. Mm. Those Gandharvas are there, aren't they? It looked really like yeah. that tree looked like. <laughs> Now it is not in that shape. There, there, it's coming. See, see. <laughs> yeah. See. There, is. there, there, there. Look. fantastic no yes. i can't think about a song <laughs> that uh, something kare mana aam tero tu sa hai e ba ha ദരിദ്ര ദൂര കരോ സുഖോ സാബന these are all uh, deep deep plantations so, right uh, all along uh, yeah. no there is no market for the tea how can that be yeah yeah so oh wow those clouds there are yeah, yeah. really uh, fantastic no <laughs> the back mm. to me uh kerala has always meant something more than a home as uh, you were told earlier i was born on the other side of the border near the indus monjodaru was where i was born larkana is the modern city of monjodaru where a number of things started uh and ever since uh, i came in uh, i think around 1976 or so to kerala i have uh, just felt a desire a wish to bring the whole world here and to to live um, to live amongst my people as it were um, i also brought one of the greatest choreographers and performers uh, in the world to kerala you may have heard about um, pina bausch she was uh, you know then thereafter she went on coming to kerala to compose a, a very fine uh, choreography for 
for the world. You know, she performed all over the world, from uh, Los Angeles to Hong Kong and um, everywhere. And she was she was equally inspired by Kerala. Uh, we went and saw Amanu perform together, Nusha Nagya. And uh, it, it stayed so much within her. was so mm. wonderful. Like it was an answer to a your search eternal, your inquiry eternal. Yeah, yeah. undoubtedly. Yeah, I felt you know I had done the right thing in my other part, and I will go forward now with the same, you know, with more confidence and go into the epic. So, so Tarang is. Absolutely based on Pudiyattam, uh, my, my work. And then all the musical films later on are based on the same principles actually. <laughs> Muslim, Turkish, Dervish is a Muslim, supposedly. Yeah. Or you are uh, Hindu, turning on your own axis and radiating. Amanur used to say that he is performing for the flame. It is like a flame. Yeah. Given all our performance arts, yeah. the nature of those performing arts, subjectivity is its very core. Everything emanates from. Yeah a center Correct. in the body itself. And the body is itself so sacred. The body is more sacred than a temple. The body, you know, yeah. which is not a sinful body. But that's what Sarpam is about. Yeah. There's no sin in the body.
to say to one another. ketchup which are also made for blood etc you know on the street that uh, you are going to work you a coconut chutney is probably any time better than that bottled stuff that you have to eat so uh, you know you have to insist you are you know it's not these people who are uh, forcing a certain kind of life and perception and jobs or lack of jobs, you know, there's going to be a ter terrible, terrible unemployment in the whole world. It has already started. It will be so terrible. That is the major, major problem. What are people, what are you, what is your future if you're not allowed to express yourself, your energy, in work, leave alone anything else, and your taste, your eyes, your ears, you know, your body and mind are threatened all the time by a kind of order which uh, has, to be, has to be shaken up you know, completely. The cinema, I think, is something which opposes all this. That is the cinema. My, one of my teachers uh, was Robert Bresson in Paris and uh, he rejected the mainstream cinema completely. He said, uh, I'm not interested in the cinema, I will call it a cinematograph. What? Uh, what uh, I want to swear. <laughs> I'm 
You know, there was a 70th birthday of uh, Haritasa Chaurasya a few I, I, years ago, I, 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 and they came I, I, and sang for him. I, I, and so beautiful they sang. These young, you know, next generation people. Sir, have you heard of uh, Hari? Hari I made a film with Haritasa Chaurasya, his music. Hari oh. on his music. <laughs> Hari ji came to Bayetu. Mm -hmm. I, I was sitting, I asked him to play Ragh Lalit. Yes. And he said, no, Ragh Lalit is not there. So you know, uh, for you I play. He played Lalit. <laughs> and I read about his uh, teacher, no? Uh, Annapurna Devi. Annapurna Devi. I knew her also. Are! She is terrific. She was a friend of uh, Rithik Das. <laughs> Touch your feet. No, no. She was supposed to. You can touch her feet seven times. Oh, 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 oh. Anapurna Devi. Music, see? Incarnate of music. Ustad Alauddin Khan's daughter. She was fine. I was told that you we cannot meet her. Very difficult to meet her. Very difficult. I sent her a message. And then suddenly, after some one and a half, two years, I got it. She was my neighbor. You know, one and a half, two years, she sent me uh, word that you will come to my place at such and such time. I am inviting you to a lesson in music. So I said, what an honor. So I went there. It was in a narrow corridor. I came out from the lift. It was very narrow. And there was her flat. And on the bell it was written, please do not ring the bell. Now I had come absolutely two minutes before the time and then I didn't know what to do. I just went on shifting my weight, waiting for it. Then just at the you know, right time, a little a few seconds after that she opened the door. I and, and then she blessed me, oh. like, you know, like my Are grandmother. You were a man. <laughs> it was a great blessing. Oh, yeah. And the one other thing was incarnate of music. Then her pupil came with her sarod and he, she started teaching. And she, throughout that, she did not play anything, she did not sing, it was all with her hands, she taught me. And in between she would talk to me about him and about the generation and this. All through the hands. How fortunate you are. Yeah, it was a great experience. Hands and feet. After that I sent her several messages. That I'll make a film in which I won't, I only show your hands and your feet. Mm. But, uh, what is the most uh, ancient craft of this place? Craft? Uh, uh, wood. Wood. Uh, wood was there and metal also. Metal. Metals also. So, can we see something like that? Look at this motif here. Yeah. What is it? This is a hookah, hookah. This is some Iranian, uh, Iranian, Iranian uh, design. No? I 
രാത്രി ആകുമ്പോ അങ്ങ് ചൈനീസ് നെറ്റ് but this particular shape it got you know, all of them are of that same size and this kind of shape of the whole structure and they operate in the night only other songs mm. like what my mother used to sing in the morning to me <laughs> to wake me up okay this was in todi which is todi todi is supposed to come from turkey actually yeah. oh you know he was right about that <laughs> it's a fundamental like shankarabarnam is to south indian music yeah todi is from turkey todi the turkish the base and the, the shepherds no yeah uh, they there's an old uh, this like kozambi used to tell us about old line going all along where the buddhist tracks are also, mm. right up to that region so shepherds they still go mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. up the mount through himachal and all this when shepherds travel in Malian range hmm. they go out from Afghanistan and beyond the boundaries beyond the bar of they keep on going essentially it's they there may... it is evolved by them <laughs> okay, so okay. it is not as if it is from one place yeah. it is really from all those from the journey yeah journey yeah in the ma technology is also economy knowledge everything is helping the other attitude yeah. of just objectification mm. and so human beings are also offering themselves as objects mm. you know, no matter how how much they speak about this the feminists speak about mm. it and all that but uh, in real fact they also they also have to agree to uh, that commodification objectification very few of them realize that but, uh, they are doing going against their own uh, those who were working with the uh, with that kind of knowledge of layers and underlying uh, structures texts whatever else you know were not they, they were not really they are still not known in a way mm. 
you know, they've, they've still not become part of our, you know, our children's, uh, let's say, lifestyles and everything. They're being sort of almost, uh, people are closing their eyes to them. How to overcome that is a problem. How to let people see again. I think one of the ways is that a lot should be written. You know? And a lot should be, like you are making these films also, which, in which uh, you are, uh, you know, sort of making people go near the processes of creation, you know, how we will, as filmmakers, mm. find something. I think there will, there will be. Yeah. Because, you know, people were even saying, I know people who have sacrificed their lives uh, for the cinema and mm. things like that. Some of them, Gone, come so desperately uh, disenchanted with what is happening. All the creativity that a person had is not being allowed. It's a very crazy situation. And this has been so since at least 30, 40 years, at least. You know, I have I been. Mean, uh, during the emergency, a lot of uh, people who knew about it spoke about it. Finance capital has taken over. You know. The Margaret Thatcher and Reagan and all these people, they made it possible only the fastest movement of money. That's it. Even the money which goes through the capitals of the world, the finance capitals, in a sense, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't get much to those people also. I think a very new situation has arisen which we must accept as the truth now. Somewhere we have to... If we are, if we are serious about uh, change in the political economy and the culture... The market operates best when there is little or no violence, you know? But that is not the case. This is the worst form of globalization that has occurred. Where the people who hold more armaments and who trade in armaments are the most powerful people. You see how our own Indian history, Kosambi used to emphasize this fact, that prosperity grew under Ashoka, no? when Buddhism was being propagated, non-violence was being Even Gandhi wanted non-violence. He wanted trade to happen, not domination by a colonial power or a power which had more jets, which invented the jets, in fact, you know, and armaments and so on. I think we need to have universal disarmament if we are going to have anything like a proper global sharing. Globalization should mean that, but it's not meaning that at all. The relationships that were at the origin of democratic capitalism, no. the relationship of the worker to his work, the relationship of the worker with the class which owned manufacture, the machine and the person who works on the machine, all this has changed tremendously. So uh, I think we really need a very, very fundamental re-examining of the theories from which we proceed in our society. 
you know, it has to be as fundamental, perhaps, as uh, the work of, let's say, Kosambi and, you know, Karl Marx himself. You know, we should try and learn that they kept on correcting their own articulation of what was going on. And every time something failed, their tactics, their strategy, the theory, everything was re-examined. So I think it's very urgent that something like that should happen. Otherwise, we'll fall back uh, into patterns of cowardice. You know, and then we will make the mistake of personalizing politics and all that. It is being forced on us, actually. If you think about it, well, you know, this personalizing politics, etc., is being forced by the media upon us. It's not a personal question at all. This confusion which is created, and when I go to the West sometimes, I get completely astonished that these old democracies, all they speak about is sexual scandals, you know, as if that matters who is sleeping with whom. It doesn't matter because the human race has to survive. It is very clear from what has happened all around us that there's a complete collapse of the social systems around, whether it's America or Pakistan or Taiwan, or Soviet Union, former Soviet Union, Russia. Overall, it's just, um, so utterly idiotic that people who do not have any work are expected to buy BMWs or to eat. I don't understand what this system is. It's a ridiculous system. You have to at least create employment in the first place. Even when you're creating employment, you have to create such an in employment where the person's aspirations to actually create are fulfilled. Everybody is creative. You know? How can a person just push buttons and think that he is creative or she is creative? They are not going to feel that way. Nobody is going to feel that way. You can't just consume chocolates and think you're creative. It's not possible. Or Coca-Cola. Hmm? Everybody wants to create, I think. Hmm. If you observe a little, any little child wants to create, he'll play with it. Every uh, bit of dust and water, fire and everything, you have to prevent them actually to, from hurting themselves. They want to create, no? All of us want to create. We just don't want to push buttons and think that we are very human. We can't, we can't be human that way. So, I think it's absolutely important that everyone is given an, that dignity of work, I think. That is more important than supplying them with Coca-Cola and you know, whatever else you want to give. It's nice to have Coke. It's all right. You know, it does a bit of harm to the teeth, but still, it's a tasty drink. It's all right. But you can't survive only on that. You can't have dignity only by eating and drinking. Hollywood would like us to buy and consume that image, that song, that kind of, uh, uh, you know, mafia, macho behavior, the imitation of that. Why should we be like that, you know? We, each one of us, just look at the variety of the way people dress Right now, in, in, front of, in front of my eyes, I can see that each one of you has that potential of being that flower, you know, which blossoms in the moonlight.
why are we not being allowed to enjoy our own daily life? It is a kind of globalization which is actually against globalization, against internationalism, against our being ourselves. Such a thing is not a globalization, it is an imperialism. So that has to be corrected. And I think we have the opportunity, you know. Uh, the very institutions that are supporting this can be reversed, can be made to stand on their head, you know. Instead of money just traveling from one place to another and going back every day through several types of uh, 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 manipulations by banks and other um, institutions around the world. That money which comes here should be spent education, health, and the joy that education and health will bring to us here, you know, in our everyday living. We can't do anything. We must have. We must have poets. We must have sculptors. See, actors. You know, everybody. Existing. You feel that? No, I. They are. They are suppressed. They are being suppressed. I'm. That's what I'm saying. That if the subjunctive can be suppressed, and if all the modes, language, all gesture is suppressed. Language is suppressed. Okay. Then how can we exist? We can't exist. We are not just uh, going, yeah. going to uh, go a <laughs> vacuum. Uh, it's, it, is, it is there with the, all the suppressions. It is there. Eh? It is there. I went to one of the oldest centers of perfumery recently, and you know they told me there's see oud, no that oud. oud, oud. They said, send, send we are showing you two forms of Ud. And we assure you that you will like the one which is not Ud, but which is being called Ud. Mm. <laughs> like that they are going on, you know. The market is going on like this. Can you imagine? And Ud is the very, it is mentioned in the Rig Veda. Mm. Agar, from... Mm. Made from agar, mm. the wood, mm. and which agar has given us agar bati. Agar bati you know? yeah. It is artificial, of course, agar bati. Agar. Because, but agar, the original agar is the most expensive material in the world today, more than gold also. Send. And it is, goes back to the Rigved. 
So you can imagine what a thing it is, you know. And, and yet, the minds of the people and the senses are affected to such an extent that the artificial Ood. Ood, agar, smell is made more attractive than the real. Than the real. And at the same time, at the same time, today I am speaking of, agar is the most expensive. Of, mm -hmm. Now what does it mean? You know, Just think about it. Taliban attacked the, the great Buddha in Afghanistan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I felt I couldn't yeah, sleep yeah. for a week, as if uh, some, you know, my friend had died or something, or you know, I don't know. It was, and I used to scold myself in my mind. See, that statue was a symbol of something. So it's good to feel that way in a way, but it wasn't a human being, you know. I think we mourn for ourselves. You know, you told me, you told me. I really think so. You told me that. And very often what happens is that when people start not believing in anything, mm -hmm. you feel that all the more. Mm -hmm. They don't believe in anything at all. Like, for instance, you said you started becoming religious when your father died on your own. Mm -hmm. You almost created a religion of yes. your own because you needed to create. That. Yes, the vacuum was so great. Although you're not a religious person, it's evident. It's a complete. There is such a breakdown of significance. There should be an end point for all this kind of uh, yeah. social activities. It eh? has to end. It can't go on like this. There is no... There is this kind of violence. It is mindless violence. Nothing is horrible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, annihilation of oneself, one's, you know, friendship, one's love everything that is positive. Today's ideology, dominant ideology, is not communist. It is absolutely see, consumerist. See, see, you know, see, something else. See, and nobody points out that this is ideological. Yeah, yeah, that's another issue. Yeah, it's a terrible issue. You see, it is an idea. We are now beaten by ideology. If I feel... Taken this, over by ideology. And by an ideology, we should not transparent. You know, so we can't even, it's so opaque, nobody calls it ideology. The moment they understand this is ideology, they will have the courage to say, I don't care you know, for what you are doing. Yeah. Like Kamala Das's poem is saying that also. It's a love poem, it's about herself. Not that poem you told. The poem is, but it is like, you know, it has got little, little, Things which you know, which look absolutely like everyday things, but the signification is very, very far reaching. I think that that poem, that poem, poem is very nice. Points. Very nice. Poem. I've lost many colleagues in the last few years, including uh, K. K. Mahajan, who was my cameraman, and uh, Mani Kaur. Somebody who met me throughout his life. And uh, Leela Naidu, who was my first producer, Pascal Chandavarka, who was my first music director. And, um, uh, you know, I also lost my first friend from Zushur some time ago, that was Dr. Narayana Menon, who had, uh, in fact, spoken to me about the great forms of performance, deep study of the epics, which uh, 
Trishur is famous for. We have wanted together to form something here of higher learning in the performing arts, in, in interaction with the human body sciences, life sciences. So yes, Ramachandran, who is a very great neurophysiologist was given the Nehru Award, I think. Anish Kapoor, who is possibly the greatest sculptor living in the world today. So I do think that uh, something great can be achieved here. We can make this place, Trisho and the region nearby, uh, to the uh, cultural center of the world. We could have made it a fantastic international meeting point for artists of all over the world. And they had accepted it. So many artists, intellectuals had accepted to come. They wanted to come. Because I think there is no such place in the world anyway. We could have created something really important. And this is really still the right time. From, uh, you know, in some ways, the whole thing, there's such a universal depression at the moment, economically. Yeah. You know, that the uh, arrogance of those who are in power anywhere in the world cannot sustain itself, basically. Yeah. This is the right time for countries like us to yes. be able to really, you know, say, okay, yeah. you, you want it, it's, it's necessary for you that such a thing should happen. Very soon again, they will be ta talking, uh, you know, of some militarist type of. Sure idea of India. Or yeah, or they've already begun doing that. Yeah, before that happens we should do it, and I think so. Yeah. And that militarist idea has led so many countries downwards actually, including Pakistan, including America itself, including uh, Burma or whatever, you know. Both the low-end countries and the high-end countries. Yes. I think it's the militarist idea which has finished it, you know. The Soviet Union obviously went down also because of its militarism. So that military industrial complex has, has to find its own end, you know. Yeah. I, I think so, I don't know. Yeah, I think you're right. And the only way that something else can come up is, is something which, which is devoted to knowledge itself for its own sake, you know, yeah. for the love of it, for the love of humanity, for, for the love of existence, being, etc. I think, I think really that's the only way. Otherwise, there, the militarist logic leads only to kill People kill trees, kill water, there'll, no, there'll be no water even. No. So all life will just cease to exist. It's, a, it's, a, it's a really a terrible situation. And I, I can't see that, even a, like, like the president, it was the president of America who was a general of the, you know, Eisenhower. Eisenhower. He said that this is a military-industrial complex. And all these people have thereafter recognized it and we should say it over and over again. Let's stop this, you know. If we, even they themselves can't exist without water, surely. You know? How can any life exist without water? Yeah. It's absurd, this. don't you think so? Absolutely. Hopefully we, we should get across.
our, in our own little way to do something. Taliban attacked the Buddha statues in <laughs> Afghanistan. And there is a new temple has come there. In front of that, they put a statue there. The junction is called Buddha Junction. The Buddha is visible from, from there. It's half a kilometer from there. Oh. Mavelikaram. Kudi Chenin Kali. Nartana Madan Kodi Chenin Kali Mutu Chilang Chartu Viderum Tamare Malerinulli Viderum Tamare Malerinulli Nadan Kumari Nartana Madan Kudi Chenin Kari Munteni Mulle Kunga will never tea Shramantile Kanwa Kumari Shagundala Kunchiya Yikalito Pilirum Kanwa Shramantile Kavya Kumari Shagundala Kunchiya Yikalito Pilirum Nyanganu yartiye Nyanganu yartiye Swarama dhurigal adi mokhanum Adi sundaro Adi mokhan adi sundar naranam niyadu 
ഉണർത്തനവാടാൻ കൂടി ചെന്നിൻ കാലിൽ മുത്തുച്ചിലൻ കൈകൾ ചാർത്തു വിടരും താമര മലരിന്നുള്ളിൽ വീടന്നു നിൽപ്പു നടനകുമാർ Hello Ravi, this is Kumar Shahani. I'm fine. So I'm on a train going to Trishur. And I want a ticket uh, to Delhi from Cochin on Sunday the 2nd. Uh, you know, the same type of ticket that you've been getting. Uh, there with the first uh, aisle seat, huh? Okay, and... Uh, and you send it directly forward it directly because sometimes the attachment doesn't open you know so when the ticket comes to you you forward it directly huh? okay so let's thanks so what are your plans now Yes, I think so too.